Grace and peace to you today. This video is going out the day before Thanksgiving, and so happy Thanksgiving to you. Uh, and you can see that we've got the tree up and decorated, uh, as well as our Advent wreath. Uh, and we are preparing for the first Sunday in Advent, which is coming up this Sunday. And so uh, the reading that we're looking at today is the epistle reading for the first Sunday in Advent. And it is 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 9 through 13. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you, and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts and holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. This is the end of the reading. This reading from Paul's letter to the Thessalonians isn't the most profound in terms of theology. There's not a lot there in that regard. In large part, it seems like Paul is just wrapping up a letter to the church there, giving thanks for them and leaving them with a blessing. It seems as much like good etiquette as anything else. But I don't think we should underestimate the emotion that Paul invests here and the sincerity with which he offers thanks. Paul had been with the church in Thessalonica for a short time, but then had to flee from the city in fear of persecution. Thessalonica stood in view of Mount Olympus, the seat of of the Greek gods, and it was an important place for trade and commerce, so the Roman government in charge at the time had a decent presence there as well. Paul's preaching of Jesus as Lord stood in stark opposition to both powers, because in Paul's teachings, if Jesus was Lord, it meant that neither the gods nor Caesar were. Paul's teachings challenged these powers, and so they tried to persecute him for them, and he had to run which means Paul was intimately aware of the threat that the church in Thessalonica was under for practicing their faith, what they uh, knew was possible for them continuing to practice their faith. For a while after Paul left, he didn't know what happened to the church there, and then Timothy brought him news, and he wrote this letter from that. Paul was incredibly sincere in the thanks that he gave for the church in Thessalonica. It wasn't a formality for him. It was Paul's heart being turned toward them, caring for them as sisters and brothers in Christ, fearing for their well-being, and giving thanks that they were okay. This video, like I said, goes out the day before Thanksgiving in the United States. And while it is a national holiday and not a religious one, giving thanks is an incredibly important part of our faith and really most other faiths as well. For us, it is a recognition of God's grace and presence in the world and in our lives. I think the way Paul is so clearly invested in the people of Thessalonica is a reminder to us how we should view our sisters and brothers in Christ. Because not only are we fellow followers of Christ on the way together, but we are, in fact, the presence of Christ with and for each other. Through the gift of the Spirit, when we look in the face of one another, we look in the face of Christ, being both made in God's image and baptized into Christ. We don't always live into that identity well, surely, but that does not change that God has chosen for Christ to be present in the world in large part through us, the body of Christ. Paul is giving thanks for the people of Thessalonica for their faithfulness and for their well-being because he cares for them as children of God and because he cares for the world that the body of Christ be present in it through them. So as we celebrate Thanksgiving as a nation, uh, know that I give thanks for you as fellow members of the body of Christ. While we do not face the persecution that Paul and the, third, uh, the church in Thessalonica did, it's not always easy to be the body of Christ, to be a Christian in the world today. To be faithful to that identity often leaves us conflicted, torn between what the world teaches us and what our faith teaches us. It creates tension in relationships 
It calls us to uncomfortable places and to love difficult people. But I give thanks that God has called you to this work for your sake and so that the world has your witness and the presence of Christ through you. And I join Paul's prayer and blessing that the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as I abound in love for you. And may the Lord so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all the saints. God's peace to you and a happy Thanksgiving to you as well.